guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Archituber. I am Architect Vaibhavi and I make content related to architecture and interiors. If you are new here, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel below. Okay, in this video, we are going to be discussing about the summary of history of architecture. Okay, uh, it is impossible to sum it up in single PPT. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to be discussing in parts, okay. So, there might be two parts, okay. So in today's video, we are starting with the history of architecture, um, the key features of history of architecture of each and every timeline, okay. And I have posted quite a few lectures on history of architecture. If you are interested, you can give them a watch. I will leave somewhere here on the screen. So without wasting more time, let's start with the video. So let us start with today's PPT. In this PPT, we are going to be discussing Summary of History of Architecture It is also a very important topic for your NATA exam Okay, we are just going to be discussing about the particular timelines key features Okay, so let us start So the first timeline is our prehistoric timeline In this prehistoric era, it covered a span of time ranging from the earliest human settlements around 10,000 BCE to the emergence of the early civilizations around 3000 BCE B BCE means before common era, okay? And the materials that they used in prehistoric period were stones, wood, mud, and animal hides for the construction due to the lack of advanced technology in that particular era. Okay, now so discussing about the types of structures, dwellings, early humans lived in caves for shelters before transitioning to simple structures made of branches, animal skins, and mud. Then coming to the megalithic monuments, Stonehenge in England and dolmens in Europe are examples of prehistoric megalithic architecture characterized by large stone structure arranged in specific patterns possibly for ritual or religious purposes. Then comes the Neolithic settlements, Jericho, Chatelhoek and Scaraberry are examples of prehistoric settlements featuring cluster dwellings made of mud brick or stone in indicating early urban planning and social organizations. Then discussing about the techniques, they use the masonry techniques, then post and lintel constructions and thatching and mud construction, okay. The function and the significance, prehistoric architecture served practical purposes such as shelters, protection from predators and storage, okay. Many structures also had ritualistic or religious significance as evidenced by the alignment of megalithic monuments with celestial events and burial practices associated with Neolithic sites, okay. Now discussing about our second timeline which is Indus Valley Civilization, okay. So now discussing about the Indus Valley Civilization, it was along the river Indus in northwest part of Indian subcontinent. This period is also known as Bronze Age period, okay. And in Indus Valley Civilization, Harappa and Mohenjo-daro displayed remarkable urban planning with well-organized layout, streets and drainage systems. It was also known for the use of bricks in construction, the very good plumbing, using grid patterns for roads, use of clay and metal art and craft, okay. Indus Valley was also known for the town planning, towns were geometrically planned, it had assembly halls, public bath, manufacturing unit, streets were divided the city into 12 blocks, few large cities had buildings including a citadel, the great bath, uh, living quarters, fortified administrative or religious centers, meeting halls and granaries. Okay, now talking about the materials they used, uh, locally available materials like mud bricks, brick stones, etc. and the wood also. Then um, post and lintel uh, were introduced in that period. Okay, uh, then talking about the structures, citadels and lower towns. Citadel means a uh, town which has a great, you know, public buildings, larger uh, buildings okay and lower town uh, usually had your residential areas and commercial areas talking about granaries and public buildings some larger structures possibly granaries or public buildings have been discovered at harappan sites okay uh, these structures were made of fired bricks and featured large storage rooms now talking about the drainage systems, one of the most remarkable features of Harappan site was their advanced drainage system. The cities had well laid out drainage network consisting of covered drains, soaked pits and manholes, okay, fortifications, 
The citadels of Harappan cities were often fortified with thick walls and defensive towers, suggesting concerns about the security and possibly external threats. Okay, artifacts and symbols that depicts the religious and cultural significance of Indus Valley civilization and decline. The Indus Valley civilization declined around 1300 BCE, possibly due to the environmental factors such as climate change and the drying of rivers. Now discussing about the Mesopotamian or Near Eastern civilization, it was very well known for their remarkable architectural achievements which reflected their advanced understanding of engineering, mathematics and urban planning. And here are some key features of their architecture. Okay, so in this Mesopotamian so in this Mesopotamian civilization or nearest civilization, city-state ziggurats uh, were introduced, hypostyle halls, fortified walls, okay, and the great public buildings with, uh, you know, uh, pyramids, temples were introduced in this period. Okay, so there were different cities in Near East or Mesopotamian architecture. Okay, uh, so many cities were developed in this era. And there were so many temples according to the each of the city. Okay, so uh, cities like uh, Babylon, Nineveh were characterized by their city-state organization and monumental ziggurats, massive step pyramids dedicated to the deities. The ziggurats served as religious centers and were often located with temples complexes. So buildings were constructed mostly mud bricks or stones. Okay, then palaces and uh, temples had big fortifications. Mesopotamian cities also featured palaces and defensive walls constructed of mud bricks. The palaces served as administrative centers and residences for rulers. Okay, so there were hypostyle halls. So in Mesopotamian and Near East, there were, as I told you, there were many temples, and each temple had a rectangular plan with peripheral columns. Okay, now talking about the cultural and religious significance of Mesopotamian civilization. In Near East, it often served religious, political and commemorative purposes reflecting the beliefs, power structures and the societal values of the respective civilizations. The monumental nature of many structures such as pyramids, ziggurats and temples underscores the importance of religion and divine rulership in ancient Near Eastern societies. Now discussing about our next timeline which is Egyptian timeline. Now discussing about the Egyptian civilization, it was the most iconic civilization where pyramids were introduced as to serve tombs for pharaohs and were constructed primarily during the Old and Middle Kingdom. Okay, there were so many pyramids. The Great Pyramid of Giza built for Pharaoh Khufu. It is the largest and most famous pyramid. Then talking about temples, Egyptian temples were dedicated to various gods and goddesses served for centers for religious worships and administrations. There were halls or the temples which were hypostyle halls supported by columns and inner sanctuaries, housing cut statues. Then tombs were introduced in this era. Apart from pyramids, tombs for nobles and officials were constructed in rock cut chambers for or mastaba structures, evolving into more elaborate forms of rock cut tombs in the valley of kings during the new kingdom period. Now talking about the materials that they use, they use limestone, sandstone, granite, mud bricks in construction. Monumental stone blocks were quarried, transported and carved with remarkable precision using bronze tools and wooden slates. Architectural elements like columns were adorned with intricate hieroglyphic inscriptions and relief carvings depicting religious scenes, royal decrees and historical events. Symbolism and Cosmology, Egyptian architecture was imbued with symbolism and religious significance reflecting the Egyptian worldview and beliefs in the afterlife. Okay, now discussing about Greek architecture. Greek architecture is characterized by its use of three classical orders, Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. Doric order is known for the simplest and fluted shafts, plain capital and no base. Ionic order features slender columns with spiral volutes and the Corinthian order is the most ornate distinguished by its capital adorned with acanthus leaves and small volutes. Talking about temples, so temples were the most important structures of the 
Greek architecture. Okay, Greek temple were the most prominent architectural form serving as religious sanctuaries dedicated to god and goddesses. Temple plans typically followed a rectangular design with a colonnade peristyle surrounding the central cella. So discussing about public buildings, Greek cities boosted various public buildings including Agora which is known as marketplace, Stoa, covered walkways, gymnasiums and civic buildings. Stoa were notable for their long colonnades providing shelter spaces for public gatherings, commercial activities and philosophical discussion. Then the use of material, limestone, marble and terracotta were primarily used in the construction because they were local materials okay marble particularly from the island of paros and mount pentacles near athens was highly prized for its durability and aesthetical appeal okay construction technique include post and lintel construction okay and talking about the greek architecture proportion uh, greek architecture emphasized principles of symmetry balance mathematical proportions reflecting greeks reverence of harmony and beauty the use of the golden ratio and the geometric principles such as the fibonacci sequence contributed to the aesthetic perfection of greek buildings now discussing about the roman architecture okay it has a major influence of greek architecture so uh, discussing about roman architecture it was characterized by its innovative use of concrete arches walls allowing for the construction of large scale structures such as aqueducts amphitheaters and basilicas okay so arch and walls were the important um, construction technique of the roman architecture romans perfected the use of arch and walls allowing for the creation of sturdy and spacious structures okay then talking about the amphitheater the roman colosseum an iconic symbol of roman engineering is the largest amphitheater ever built it could hold up to 50000 spectators and hosted gladiatorial contest okay then aqueducts roman aqueducts were marvels of engineering designed to transport water over long distance of urban centers now discussing about the materials that they use in uh, concrete brick marble limestone until this period so many materials were introduced and they used all of the variety of materials okay uh, then talking about the main urban planning roman cities were carefully planned with straight streets grid patterns monumental public buildings arranged around forums temples were influenced by greek architecture but often featured unique elements such as engaged columns and podiums now discussing about the last timeline of uh, this ppt which is early christian transition from the persian to christian early christian architecture emerged during the late roman empire as christianity gained prominence basilicas centralized planned churches baptisteries were introduced okay so what does mean by basilicas early christian churches were often adapted from roman basilicas repurposing them for christian worships centralized planned churches over time early christian architects developed centralized planned churches characterized by central domed space surrounded by radiating chapels or circular ambulatory baptisteries they were separate structures or part of churches used for the sacrament of baptism discussing about the materials that they use early christian architects used variety of materials including brick stone marble okay concrete the employed roman construction techniques such as the use of concrete brick walls and barrel walls romanesque influence early christian architecture laid the foundation of romanesque architecture which flourished in europe during the medieval period romanesque churches retained elements of early christian design such as the basilica plan and the use of churches and walls and yes with that we have discussed about the part a of history of architecture and in upcoming video we are going to be discussing about the remaining part of the history of architecture okay so if you want to check out the playlist for history of architecture I will leave here on the screen. Please go check it out, and also you can check out the Nata preparation series if you haven't already. Please go give it a watch. Okay, and with that, um, I'll see you in my next video. If you like the video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, please take care and bye.